Good evening. It's February 22nd, 2024. Welcome back to another episode of our Sons of the Father. We're still continuing our discussions on The Chosen, created by Dallas Jenkins. Tonight, we'll be exploring Season 3, Episode 8. It's the season finale of Season 3, Sustenance. During this series, my dad, John Warren, my brother, Jim Warren, and myself, we're going to be having a conversation. And we're reflecting on the things that have impacted us along our way. So, welcome to the Sons of the Father on the Dusty Feet. And of course, before we forget, if you find these kinds of podcasts useful, that's when you click the subscribe button. The reminders, they're just there to help you. But also, if you think these might be useful to others, that's when you click the like button, because that is the way that YouTube chooses to share these to more people, if they wish. So we're ending the season with sustenance. So in the opening, um, we see Jesus telling his disciples, and then suggesting to the rest to uh, take a seat. We're going to be here for a while. We might be here for a while, too. Because Jesus opens with recalling the woman with the issue of blood and the touching of him. Seems the fullness of that story was still not fully understood. <laughs> and a reminder was in order. But I really liked that Jesus started the discussion by addressing only his disciples the rest will be joining in later. It does bring up a lot to kind of mull out as we roll on this, guys. Because um, there, there, there's a lot. So, um, and we'll, we'll see where it takes us. It'll be interesting. So, that said, daddy how do you want to kick us off? What I like about doing it this way with the three of us is you get three different opinions of the same thing, three different looks, views, personalities, uh, insights. And um, what, I, what I got out of it was um, it, it's just full of questions and confusion. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, just a, a, lot of, a lot of confusion and questions that they all had. They didn't understand uh, when the when uh, Philip and uh, uh, came the first time and talked to them, and they're still trying to straighten it out. But what they all wanted was something just for them, as opposed to something that was for everyone. Mm -hmm. And as we've all discovered that that's the beauty of following Christ, is he meets each and every one of us right where we are, and takes us from there. It helps us to grow, helps us to mature, helps us to see things we didn't see before. Mm -hmm. And um, what what I what I liked um, the way it started with King David that was confusing to me. Was I couldn't I didn't quite grab. And then I said, okay, that must have been Bathsheba pregnant with Solomon. And you know what's the point of reading? And, and then you realize that he's reading what Jesus is doing, and Jesus is talking about what happened back then. And that, that is, was then became you know, fascinating. And, and where, where does it go from there? In both David's and, and, uh, and Jesus's uh, questions and positions in life, and he was only starting as uh as she was pregnant with solomon and uh i'm not his, sure with solomon dad you David. may want to think about that again but i don't know but that 10th kid <laughs> solomon is his 10th child did Bathsheba have nine kids before this and it was more than one wife not solomon hmm. solomon's not his firstborn well, I know that. I, I know that. She was his uh, first wife. Sure. But anyway, what yes. my, my keep that. point was is that 
I didn't understand why they were starting. That's the only thing that made any sense to me is that uh, is what I just said, uh, whether it's whether it's true or not. But it didn't change the what Jesus was going through with the Greeks and the Jews and, and all of the different uh, tribes that were involved in individuals and all of the confusion and the questions and uh, that um, and then right in the middle of it here comes the guy that Jesus heals and they're talking about all kinds of things of why he healed the lady as we were talking about before we went on air the one the woman with the issue and it what was it it was her faith and that's what Jesus starts to talk about it's about your faith and um i mean it goes on and on and on with uh eden and visiting zebedee and his well actually they they kind of bushwhacked her <laughs> she walks into the trap but it it just had the there was so much content in here and too many different individual stories the the man that jesus healed the big guy is he going to be the guy that helps carry the cross these are the things that came into my mind uh, because obviously I'm looking back where they weren't looking back, but so much of it, uh, the way Dallas weaves uh, stories into stories is uh, where, where was he going with this? So, okay, Jim, what do you hold see? On. I, we want to clarify something for the people here too. This story that we're talking about and the scene that you've watched in sustenance is not a story in scripture. Right. Oh, absolutely not. Yeah. Right. So we need to make this clear for everybody. No, it is an amalgam of stories of which right. are all viable. The the parables and teachings, all this that, that we're we're gonna get to are parts of scripture. This is an amalgam to bring them all together. So we have multiple agendas being addressed at the same time, where sometimes those individual parables were mm -hmm. to specific audiences at the time, not not the Gentile group discussion. So there's a there's a mix here. So we, we, we need to be careful amongst ourselves and you all listening too that feel free to go back, read them in scripture, and hold us accountable to what we talk and share about as well. That we make sure that we don't mix and mash our stuff together as well. Fair guys? Yeah. Okay. Jimmy go. Yeah, it was it was more essence than actual in terms of what was being portrayed, and and but again, as Dad said, the the way Dallas weaves things together, it makes it an amazing story, um, a powerful story, and uh, portrayal of the heart of what was going on and what Jesus was accomplishing at the time. Um, I loved that it began with the Psalm of Asaph and I love mm -hmm. that it ended with it too. Um, mm -hmm. It was, it was the sandwich, you know, and usually he, I mean, we've seen before where he starts with a historical event or story or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then in comes the disciples and, and so on. I think it's the first time he's ended with one, mm -hmm. um, you know, the, the same thing. And I, I liked that. Uh, and of course the way it wove in, the grief of uh, Peter and the grief of Eden um, into what was, you know, what was being addressed in that Psalm. Mm -hmm. um, and then even just the, the water and the cleansing, you know, the both going underwater, all of that I thought was beautiful. This one felt very emotional for me. I had, you know, super high elation during the feeding of the 5,000. Um, I literally could not get a smile off of my face. The entire time it was just fun to see the disciples you know going crazy with what is going on here you know and at the end when they're like I'm, i'll never be surprised again five minutes later they were surprised again <laughs> kind of thing so that was fun i, I think overall it was very emotional um very touching you know I, again i'm crying and i'm laughing all in the same episode um which was cool but there was so much you're right you know the what was going on with even shmuel Oh my gosh, you know, trying to figure out he's having this crisis of, of, you know, what do I believe in? Um, 
echoing the words, you know, how is my enemy exalted above me? You know, that David would say, I say, I don't know what to do with this. Uh, I'm anxious to see what happens in season four with him. Um, so there's a lot of that kinds of stuff going on that was fun to be both challenged in and then see how uh, uh, Dallas uh, kind of unraveled those things throughout the course of the episode. And then also teasing us with, obviously there's going to be some stuff in the next season. That's going to be pretty cool. Right. Yeah, no, good. Um, uh, there's some interesting. Okay. So let's start chew up a few things. We'll, we'll walk down the best we can. Let's try to keep on the storyline in the, as the stories be unfolding for Dallas. So keep us track on, on things that we want to bounce back and forth about. I think it's good. Um, so there's a point in, in the discussion, Jesus tells, it's and interesting again, like I said, he tells the disciples, have a seat. We're going to be here for a while, right? He doesn't, the other people around can choose what they want to do. For my guys listening to me, have a seat. We're going to be here. And he starts to talk and he brings up, there's a point where he talks about the mustard seed. Um, set up which which has <laughs> all kinds of challenges with that that probably do that on, at uh, another time. But he talks about Judas throws out the give us more faith. He makes this statement. And it's interesting to me because maybe when we blur the line, it's like I give you faith. And I don't think it's something to be given. I think it's something to be experienced. To lived for us to come to that place, right? Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. it's kind of like Jesus saying, you know, I can I can bring you here to this, and I can show you examples of it, right? Which he talks about the woman with the issue is me give you an example of what that can look like. Um, you know, we, we have something similar in the um the paraplegic being dropped. Through. He gets the same piece. He says some very bold things um, uh, with that there and the healing of the guy in this, where he makes a claim and he says something, and then he says, okay, I'll back that up with a miracle, right? So we, we have a lot going on with, with how he responds and acts. And then he gives them these examples, yeah? Um, because it, it's a real struggle for people, analogies and uh, metaphors, right? These parables are not clear. They're not. I, I, think, I think we think they're so clear today. <laughs> I'm not so convinced. I'm not. Um, but he... He shares them, and I feel for Matthew because he's so literal that he's like, I I don't get it, and I understand. There's there's an element of people that it's very real to, and I, I think we have um, challenges with that. Yeah, and um, and. and so when they're talking about the faith thing, how does that how does that meld with you guys? They because that the, we we hear that question sometimes echoed in scripture, not just at one time. Is give us faith, give us this, and I and he he never alludes to here. I hand it to you. He he ties in events, stories, experiences. How's that fit with you guys, Daddy O? That's a that's an interesting question because I I think when he healed the man, what he was trying what it seemed like to me he was trying to establish was who he is. Uh, the man came up and he and he heals him. Let let's establish that I am who you heard I was, and I can do this. And I don't know how many other times. Jesus did that exact same thing, and he healed somebody just to get their attention. And when when you say um, 
the the faith uh because that's what the man exhibited he came right up to jesus and said if you say so you know i I'm, that's why i'm here because i've heard about you and he jesus was a, a, a stating that what about us you know have how much faith do we have uh, i i've seen people with incredible amounts of faith in my life on trips to different countries and I, I think i told you about the story of the lady in russia who we didn't have a wheelchair because her body was so deformed um and but her faith was unreal so um do i have faith um yeah i got some but i i I have enough questions to know that my faith isn't as strong as some that I have seen and heard both. Yeah. And there is some embarrassment to that. And the reality is it's a really good question that everybody that's watching this can ask themselves, how much faith do we have? How much can I say, I know this mm. and I believe it? And and th this is this is what we're viewing, aren't we? In this entire episode, is Peter's faith, or Simon's faith? I mean, and Eden's, and and uh, questions are going on and on in, in all of their minds, many of their minds about what is what is faith. Hmm. I've seen you do things. I've met people, but do I have the faith that they have? That is a good question. Yeah, tough one, Jimmy. Well, even Jesus, jump ahead toward the end of the episode when Peter is on the water and he said, I give you these trials to build your faith, to test your faith, to strengthen mm -hmm. your faith. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of like, dad, I've heard you say before, never ask God for patience because he's not going to give it to you. He's going to give you opportunities to practice it. And the same thing with faith. God's going to give us opportunities to learn it. And my my oldest daughter, Duray, and I were, well, you guys know, I should say Duray. I'm, I'm thinking for the audience. Um, we were talking literally today about surrender, you know, and mm -hmm. what that means. You know, we can sacrifice a lot, but to fully surrender to God, you know, that's a, that's a tough one. Um, and, but as we were talking, I was remembering um, a psychologist talking about how to change your thinking, that you don't think differently to change your behavior. You actually act differently to change your thinking. Behavior comes before feeling about something. Hmm. And so, and, and, and we see those kinds of things in the way that God brought Israel through situations. It's like you need to obey in order to understand what it means. Faith, we have to act on that faith to then go, oh, I have faith. Um, there, there's something to that, that movement um, that changes how we think. And when we have those, oppor those small opportunities to build faith by trusting God in a, in a short moment, um, in, a, in a small circumstance, that we go, okay, I've, I've acted that way. It's changed how I feel. So the next time one comes up that's bigger, I go, oh yeah, I that faith, I remember that because, you know, the previous circumstance. And I think that's what um, Peter's beginning to see um, as he's learning more about what that faith looks like. That's a, you bring up a lot of interesting points because um, the, the faith, as a mustard seed. Maybe. Stretching. I like to do a little upside down thought. Is that faith will start as a mustard seed. That same faith that starts as a mustard seed can eventually get to there. It's a thought. Um, we have we have the point. Is, is faith a long-term thing or short-term short, short -term thing? Jimmy, you mentioned it, and I, 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 I get it. Maybe it's little snips of of what that does. 
Um, because if it's knowledge, it's not faith, right? So it's it it's not that, or we're mixing and mashing terms, which we do this a lot. We do this mm -hmm. all the time. We mix and mash terms, and it and it does and it confuses people. It does cause problems, and it causes problems with, with with the disciples. We got problems with terminology that they're struggling with, um, and even grasping things. I liked where he again went back to the. He tells the story, uh, uh, reminds him of the story of the woman with the issue of blood touching his CT. And they go, well, it was, then he goes, it wasn't the tassel. It wasn't the CT. It was the faith. So he's mm -hmm. obviously you're, I need to remind you, he's looking at them. He's talking to them. They're listening. So there's a way. I don't know if chastisement is a word admonish. I, I, I don't know, but his point where he's talking to them and said, we need, we need to understand this. You and I, disciples, yeah. we need to understand this. Because if we don't understand it, how am I going to send you out there? Yeah. So uh, that the, the faith thing is something that we'll probably talk a lot more on this about this down the road. Yeah. Um, but well, it is something he even, that's important. There, there was one point when he said, it's not so much the amount as it is who you have faith in. That's that a huge was thing. huge. Yeah. yeah, that was super significant because again, and, it takes it from the TC to to Jesus, but it also takes it from you know, because we we do we focus on the mustard seed, yeah. you know, rather than no, it yes, it has to be an amount, but it's more who you believing in and what what he can do. That's a good point, Jimmy. That that what it's attached to, if that faith is attached to God, ah. I'm actually having this conversation with some um, guys of mine in, in my men's group, and we've actually talked about this very thing, which I thought was, sometimes I always think they're surprising, and then I go, no, not so much. Thank you, God, again for this. Um, but that that's a good point, to think that what that seed's attached to, and the what it can do is is that. And we hadn't talked about that way. I like that. Thank you. Well, um, and, and you see it later on with Shmuel, you know, going through that kind of that crisis thing. It's like all mm -hmm. of a sudden what he's been believing isn't the right thing, believing in or having faith in the law um, versus mash, God. Mash. Yeah. And mm -hmm. he's and he's his knowledge. He's thinking that his knowledge is going to be the faith. And I think that's part right. of the, the struggle because yeah. Yeah. Jesus is taking them outside of what would be the normal deal. He's bringing them back to reliance on God again, not, not the how you do, the why you do. Yeah. The hows where we will talk about, we will get to, but never forget the why. That was the whole point with the prophets later on, which wasn't mentioned in this people. So please don't let me confuse you. But the prophets went along and the prophets were like, you're so busy with the how you lost the why you lost your love. You lost the whole reason for it. Yep. Get back to that. I might equate that to faith. Um, I think that would be an accurate point um, that, that, that we have. So um, interesting. So yeah, um, the the biggie on this one with them in this as, as as that scene opens up and starts to roll is that they're going to be an example to the nations, right? So we get this amalgam story, like I talked about, this amalgam story. So what do we kind of have here? We have the nations surrounding these guys. And then we're going to get there where we go to where now we're going to see that ex ex exposed and played. Um, the thing that he said to the guy that he healed, Dad, you bring up this point. Jesus looked at me and said, um, I know you. Remember that? Yeah. He gets him, he looks at him, he looks in his face, he touches his face. He says, I know you, right? Okay, so I'm going to suggest a very, it's a Jewish train of thought, and it goes back to the guy that opened up this, this episode. It goes back to King David, okay? And King David's train of thought, and I'm the term is flipped a little bit, but you'll get, because this is what David's thinking is on this, is that um, his fear was not being seen by God. It was David's view of it, the point of it, okay? We like to use the word here. Scripturally, seeing is, is 
more the term that we that we get with this. Yeah. And he his concern was at 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 best that um you're not paying attention to me. At worst, that you've turned your back on me. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's David's, that is David's number one fear. He's that it, he knows guys are after him. He knows trying to kill him. He knows he's done wrong. He knows he's going to die. He, there's lots of things he's aware of that aren't as fearful to him as God not being there in all of that, seeing him. So when we see that with him, we get the, I hear, I, he says, I, I, I hear you. Is I, I, I see you, meaning I know you. I know you. I see you. And in that, he's, he's, to that guy, he gets that somebody actually understands something about me. Then all bits are off on the on, on the uh, on the healing. And like at that healing, Dad, and you put it at that healing, everybody kind of went. Like I said, that was for the greater good of the scene. Dad, your your point was perfectly clear. That he is very clear, and that's when the rest of them go, oh. Maybe we'll have a seat. (laughs) Maybe we do want to listen to this rabbi and see what he has to say. It's not, it doesn't, he just because they're sitting down, the conversation doesn't all of a sudden get to be very civil. I mean, they're, they're, it's, it's, it's still uh, contentious. There's still a lot of banter going on, but they've agreed to have the banter. Does that seem fair? Mm -hmm. I, I, I thought it was interesting to me that each one of them were fighting for their who they were. Oh yeah, yeah. And and they <laughs> well, oh, yeah. you know, when you, you don't expect me to change and listen to what the Jews got to say, or listen to what the others have. To, the, this is the Greek guy talking. And each one of them wanted to wanted to take and apply their own faith or religion or whatever to whatever Jesus was saying, instead of listening to Jesus, who was saying, you're all accepted, you're all okay. But they didn't see it that way at that at that time. But we find that today in in my men's group. I was saying the thing that I like about groups is you get to hear all these different opinions about the same verses that we just went over and how each one of us from our backgrounds, from our upbringing, from our education, from whatever, this is, this is the way that we interpret Mm. this. And you find yourself going, Hmm, yeah, that's pretty good. I, I like that. I'd like, whether you're going to give up your own idea or not, it's it's the fact that God meets each one of us where we're at. And that's what, what Jesus, they're talking about all kinds of things. Jesus is talking about faith. Mm-hmm. Do you have faith in me? Do you have faith that I can do this? Do you have faith that what's coming out of me is the truth? Because what you're talking about is tradition what I'm talking about is faith. And, and I, I, ju- I just gommed on to that, to that part of it right there. And until we get to the point that I want to know what you've got to say about how I should live my life, how I should be, rather than what I've got to say about it. And, and that, that opens up or prepares us for who knows what, uh, Dallas is going to open up just in the rest of this episode. There's so many other things. Yeah. Atticus is in there, and and Shmuel, mm-hmm. like you say, Shmuel's in there, and it, it it just gets juicier and juicier all <laughs> all the time. Yeah. So I'm I'm enjoying it. Yeah, Jim, you know, did We're you good. have something, Jimmy? It was uh, interesting. And at first, when I saw the title sustenance, and I was trying to look at it, you know, how does yes, obviously the feeding of the five thousand and whatnot. But I loved when Peter, when Jesus pulled Peter out of the water, and 
Peter's like, don't let me go, don't let me go, don't let me go, uh, over and over and over again. And then Jesus said, um, I let people go hungry so that I can feed them. And it was interesting that play mm -hmm. on what was going on there, back to the beginning of the episode when the people were coming around and asking questions it's again back to that yes they're asking questions and they're frustrated and they're angry but at the heart of the issue for them they were hungry for something greater than what they were experiencing there you go. in their various context mm -hmm. communities whatever yeah. Yeah. and jesus knew that and even so much so that I think he intentionally let them get hungry physically because mm. that was going to increase their sensitivity and awareness to what was being spoken. Then he comes in and feeds them an even greater sense of, wow, this guy actually cares about what we need, added gravity to what was being spoken and i just loved that whole interplay of hunger desire even feeding into the whole issue of faith yeah no that's a that's strong point um there's there's a lot again because this this, this is an amalgam of stories where we're we're blending these things so we're we're kind of we're playing off what is real and not real. Is is that fair? And, and so um, we want to be careful in, in the scenario. But yet, yeah, he's he's meeting them where where they're at. He's brought them all together, and he's and he said they're all um, choosing to engage, right? I think at yes. the point where he heals the man, so he adds like dad's dad. You said he he kind of sets his presence right and he establishes who he is okay we've got that out of the way you've all heard about this guy that can right that's what Shmuel keeps chasing the guy that can right so mm -hmm. he can so now you've all seen it now they decide okay you're right now let let's let's talk you know and and we're willing to let the banter um begin um there was one point and I'm going to leave with this, and it's going to be hanger. People can think about it, talk about it. We can do several words. So that's one of the scoops, is that um, there, there's a little point where uh, one, of the, one of the Jews sitting down on the ground mentions the prophet saying something, mm -hmm. okay? And Jesus mentions back. Now his answer was, don't pit the prophets against each other, okay? Right. I'm not compelled that's a valid answer. I'm compelled that it's a convenient answer. But what do we do when there are points in Scripture? This is, isn't a fairy tale. There are points in Scripture that appear to collide. Mm -hmm. Okay, they're not running parallel. They collide. So... When we want to hear some people say things to us, we say things to them, right? Mm -hmm. Fair, it goes both ways. And somebody says, well, I've heard this, right? And mm -hmm. one of Jesus' favorite statements was, um, so you've been told, or you've heard this. And then mm -hmm. he says, and I'm going to tell you this, you know? Um, the point that, that um, the point in the prophets that Jesus brings up is pointing to him. This guy's not ready to listen to, he's going to go, and the purpose of that prophet's conversation. So mm -hmm. I, I, I'd like us to think if there are those out there, just for fun, that happen to have things where they think there's conflicts, this is just an addendum. I just, this off the top of my head, um, throw them, send me an email or throw them in the comments and we can talk about conflicts because that seems a, f a fair bit. Yeah. Okay. So with that, um, so we're, we're soon going to be completing this season, right? And uh, the next season, it might not start until after we finished these episodes, although this is going to be probably at least two, more likely three episodes or more. Um, so what we're asking you to do, if you're interested, if any of you would like 
um, recommend to us a favorite scene you want us to go back over and visit. Okay. Um, any, any season of the three so far, and if there's a particular scene that you'd like us to talk about, send me an email at bob at the Um, or you can just, again, drop something in the comment if you want to be vis more visual about it. Um, and we'll be glad to bring them up and cover it because I, I think it would be fun because then we'd know, have see what some, what if, what scenes have impacted you? I know I have some favorites. Um, but for, for me and, and I think it'll be fun. So again, it's out there. We've got it before we wrap this up, then we'll roll those over into the next and then get ready to start season four. Cause that hopefully is not too, too, too far away. Right. So again, to you all, shalom, shalom. And thanks for with us, um, tonight again for another sons of the father on the dusty feet. What is that?